Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Sea, my friends. Now, we are currently at Visage, we have one fuel, and we have a lot of business to deal with. Uh, our most pressing issue is going to be getting back to London. But first, this is only our second time in Visage, so I figure we might as well go ashore, see what's there. The terms, all those who enter must play their parts, and we will play our parts very well. Check in at the customs house. We know well where our father's corpse is. Unfortunately, we need a Z story to get it. Or to take the next step. So we'll check in at the customs house. One may not wander visage at will. There's a changing room. All visitors must pass one by one through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. Could ask to go without any mask. Um, hmm. I'm actually curious what this will do. No. Moon Moth unfolds and folds its wings. Not suitable, it says. On Visage, everyone is masked. To walk on the island with your own face would give scandal. Maybe I want to be scandalous. Ah, uh, well, if not that, then I suppose we'll have to choose something else. So. We've been the frog. And I am inclined towards money, so perhaps the locust. It looks voracious. Hunger for all things. Moon Moth settles the locust mask over your head. The eye holes are covered with a thin gold film through which valuable objects gleam more brightly. May you find a happy harvest, says Moon Moth. Then, when you have partly turned away, it double knots the ties on its purse, as though you're likely to pick its pockets. Hilda, no, you can see it. Ah, very silly. Very, very silly. We'll visit the Library of Parts, though. Stupid Lindel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone, guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms, the scroll niches sort to, yeah. The scroll niches sorted to correspond to a variety of masks. The jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and dung beetle. A woman in the mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Hmm. Could pick the pockets of the readers, or we could steal the most valuable-looking scroll for later sale. It is the sort of thing a locust might do. Hmm, that seems kind of batty, though. And as we know, bat is ill-omened. So, let's pick the pockets of the readers. While they're looking, you can be acquiring. Successful, if not wealthy. You dip your fingers into a crocodile's purse and acquire a few coppers from a heron. The coins here are no more than tiny copper chips, each stamped with an eye sigil. The exchange rate must be thousands of these to the echo, hardly worth taking home. But you have acted as a locust is meant to act, anyhow. There are no scrolls for locusts in the library of parts. Hmm. Oh. Oh, so past a certain level of expertise, we can't do that anymore. Fair enough. Um, hmm. Trade masks with the Moon Moth. It has been making subtle overtures for some time. You only now understand them. Okay, go for it. It is keen to go. It draws you aside into a closet in the customs house. Had enough of visage, it tells you frankly. Here, you take my mask and pretend to be me, and I'll trade in the visitor mask and get on some departing ship. Get my life back. Its face, no, now you see her face, is aging but unlined. A lifetime of never needing to use a facial expression. Well, that's worrisome. Hmm. How do I leave then? Um... Well, I might be here for a while. Um. Well. Okay. Um. Hmm. We'll visit the house of the chief geometer. It is understood to be an honor. Lines in wet ground. Each morning, the man in the cobra mask draws lines in the mud flat with a pointed steel rod. This apportions to each inhabitant a small trapezoidal area from which to harvest mushrooms and to scrape salt. 
No plot is ever preserved from one day to the next. This man is the chief geometer, the keeper of directions, master of land measures and sea measures. Good for him. Hmm. Um... Okay. Now you have been invited to his home at the time customarily appointed for him to receive those who are not his equal in rank, yet not so far beneath him as to deserve to be ignored. What ceremonial gift will you bring? Bring a string of rats? Oh, yeah, that seems like a great idea. Bring a necklet of lapis beads. If they do not suit him, they may suit a wife of his. If they don't suit her, he can use it for her offering. Hmm. Um... I do not know anything about Egyptian culture with regards to snakes. Uh, how many foxfire candles? No, oh, just one. Sure, we'll bring fresh candles. You've heard that he likes candles. Hunger set aside. The gift is suited to him personally. One can see this by the way that he hesitates regretfully before he performs the rejection that etiquette requires. It was thoughtful, but it is not the gift of moth to cobra, therefore wrong. Okay, so what would the gift of moth to cobra be? Let's try this again. Um, so clearly, not candles. Honey cakes? Uh, I'm not sure. A comb made of bone? No. No. Um, I mean, I would have to assume two honey cakes. Sure, why not? Triumph! He accepts, he approves. The cakes are placed on the front table of his receiving room so that the other guests may observe and appreciate the correctness of your gesture. You are permitted to stand to one side and to watch the others arrive. But there is no one whose gift supplants yours in the place of honor. Not even the gift of a preserved lark frozen in gelatin with a bubble of song rising from its open beak. When you depart the chief geometer's house, he presses on you a prediction that one day when you have most need, the earth will swallow you in one place and spit you out in another. It is, of course, only a ritual saying. Um, excuse me, please explain. No, no, I... That seems like a statement that needs explaining. You want to expand on that, maybe? Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Really. Okay, um... Visit the Temple of Apis. Apis. I'm gonna go with Apis. All the denizens of Visage go there sooner or later. The Wounded God. In the center of the temple is a black bull with a white diamond on its face. It is tied in place with heavy ropes, and it is wounded in the thigh. From this wound, it bleeds... It bleeds... Copiously without dying. What the heck is that? Uh, um, um, huh. Well, the priests gather around the bull, capturing its blood in cups. Observe and make notes, I suppose. The customs here may be worth reporting later. You alone may act. The priests would be suspicious of anyone else who did this, but you, as Moon Moth, often have a need to narrate the rituals of visage to newcomers. The explanations in the library of parts are not suitable for strangers, and therefore you are expected to compose your own. An intriguing snippet. And we're aware of higher roles. Oh. Well, um... Okay, we'll enter the hollow of the ear. This is a journey of several steps and may conclude your current visit. Ah, very well. A proud nose. It is a festival day. The great stone face has been illuminated from forehead to chin with blazing torches, so that the profile is visible from the side more clearly than you have ever seen it. Flourishing of years is awake, says the genderless figure in the crocodile mask. All the denizens of Visage are walking towards the ear together. 
There is a place in the procession which belongs by right to the wearer of your mask. I mean, I am curious. We'll fall in line with the others. How else will you discover what lies within? Among your own, you go as though you are truly one of them. You carry nothing with you but your mask and your costume. May your heart be as light as a feather, says the woman in the lotus blossom mask as you fall into line behind her. Okay, the road you follow leads up through switchbacks along the side of the face, and finally to the ear of flourishing of years, and into the cave that is her ear. The tunnel bends back on itself and all lights have now been extinguished. There is nothing to guide you but the hand of the person behind you on your back and the movement of the person in front of you. The one who walks beside you wears a bat mask. Fortunately, the floor of the tunnel is very smooth and presents no stumbling blocks. Sound carries strangely in this place, however. Sometimes you cannot hear your own footsteps, and sometimes a breath comes back to you audible from someplace ahead in line. Uh, well, we're going to continue. There's a secret in the dark. In line. The footsteps of the people are steady and synchronized, and you go together. For how many years has this been done? And for how many will it be done in the future? Watch your step here, says Batmask to you in an undervoice. Its accent is the accent of wolf stacked docks. Floor is about to get squishier. And sure enough, it does. Oh, is flourishing of years alive? Oh, don't tell me it's alive. Uh, no. Well. At last, the tunnel opens out. You and all the other congregants spread out in a cavernous space. A voice speaks in the darkness, a ritual preparation. Here at the New Year, we gather under the one mask of flourishing of years. Her face is turned to the gods. Protected by her mask, we may remove our own. Protected by her script, we may speak outside our parts. Here and there is the sound of people fumbling with ties and strings. Your own face feels different with the mask off. Hmm. Well, we could wait and listen, or fight the urge to giggle. Hmm, I think we shall not do that. There are things here to learn, perhaps to your advantage. I should hope so. Oh, well, there goes an another secret. Hmm, not much for blackmail. You move stealthily through the dark, hearing one knot of conversation and then another. The secrets exchanged do not offer much leverage. You can't see the owners of the secrets. Here and there you catch the smallest fragment of something that might serve you on a future occasion. The memory of a voyage east, a half-rumor about the Carnelian coast, a muttering about the Admiralty. Hmm. The hour of confidence is drawing to its end. If there is anything else you need to do, now is the time. We shall do nothing. Let the ceremony end according to its proper rites. Oh. Last bell. At the end of the hour, there comes a woman with a feather of shimmering silver, which she tucks into your hand, symbol of the innocent heart that will not be eaten by the jackal. Then a bell rings, and the time of speech is over. You all begin to put your masks back on. It is possible, you cannot know for sure, that in this cover someone has exchanged a mask with someone else. It is an orderly and perfect line that emerges again from the ear of flourishing of years. If anyone watches from above, they must surely be satisfied. We must end our performance and leave the island. You can't stay in character forever. Work calmer. When the other citizens are distracted, you find your way to the familiar customs house and rid yourself of mask and robe. There is a satisfaction in laying aside a role well performed. And decreasing our terror just that little bit. Hopefully, it will be enough to keep us going. Um, I mean, how do we want to do this? I think we will go to the Mangrove College, go to Gardens Morn, then Abbey Rock, Quakers Haven, London. I think that sounds like a reasonable plan. I don't know if we'll actually do that, but it's the beginnings of a plan. So first of all, let's head out. We will at least get to Mangrove College. And I need to remember that we already know where Mangrove College is. Keep that light out because 
Lord knows we don't need to use it for nothing. Except for keeping them sane. Ugh, it's that annoying balance. There we go. God, I love the music here. Can't really keep with it, though. Um, is which island? Ah, yes. A little bit more westerly. Would have known that if I just waited a bit. But, uh, oh well. Important thing is... Well, for one thing, um, hmm. Trying to think of what the important thing is. Not sure what the important thing is. Uh, most important is not dying. Yeah. <laughs> it would really suck if we did at this point. But, yeah, so far we're doing okay. For, you know, one barrel of fuel and... Tons of supplies. We're doing good. We're actually going to burn off a few of those candles here. Um, oh. Well, of course, pick up a passenger. Oh, someone new. A checkered character. The principal is Port Cecil. Black and white and silver. Please take me there. Sooner, later, it doesn't matter. I know how complex the moves can be. Ah, you definitely belong there. We'll go into the Wispways, use some of our little candles. Exchange them for something more valuable, perhaps. The swamps around the village are full of mud, crocodiles, and vegetable treasures, including the notorious parasite called Solace Fruit. The fogs and spreading branches occlude all light. And... Change of background. Okay. 33% chance, and I'm certainly not going to leave, so... Well, first things first. Narrow waterways and... Quaggy paths, marsh lights, and mud. Now and then, parasynthetic mosses like shaggy curtains. Now and then, a questing tentacle. We have a calamity of ants. Shining bodies burst from the pitcher plants around you. A thick mat of ants swarms in ambush. Flee. Sulfurous stirrings. Away, you leap and dash. You slap the horrid things from your calves. You suck bitten fingers and stare around, panting. You're out of danger. Again, sulfurous stirrings. Not sure what that's about. A little weird. An abandoned fort. Didn't, isn't this where we were before? A half-fallen fortress of basalt blocks on a low hill. The creatures of the swamp have stayed clear. There's insufficient mud, perhaps. Lost some terror, and we have a moss-furred boat skeleton. Okay. Uh, you mount a guard on the walls, build a fire of stinking peat, upend your boots to evict sulky tadpoles. The swamps around you resound with sobbing whoops and screeching creaks, but nothing shows itself. Time passes. Seething trees? So that's new. Branches thrash, leaves foam. The trees here writhe with fear. Gained a little more terror, not good. On through the laced shade of the groaning oaks. At the back, a sailor whimpers in fear. They're dying, someone says. They're dying. Then you're through. No one's orchard. The bark was scarified with marks resembling writing. A lump of flint lay at the base of the tree. Solace fruit. Was the flint a tool or merely a rock? It was impossible to be certain. The solace fruit, too, which grew on the tree, they are parasitic, and they will grow wherever they choose. But their colors mimic the bark. Perhaps this was their native tree. Impossible to be certain. Well. I think it best we eat, drink, and be merry while we can. And, um, get our port report. Delightful. All the same as usual, and no, I think we just leave. Hmm. Now... A little more plotting. But first, thank you very much for your time, and I shall see you all soon.